Whether it's for a honeymoon or a family getaway, millions of people board luxury cruise ships every year for a good time. But tragically, not everybody returns home. In fact, there is an increasing concern about the safety aboard cruise ships, as so many people go missing from the vessels. In today's episode of Cold Case Detective, we'll be looking at just two cases of people who have gone missing while on board a cruise ship. George Smith IV. Born October 3rd, 1978, George Allen Smith IV was 26 years old when he went missing while on a cruise ship in the summer of 2005 during his honeymoon. On June 25th, 2005, George married 25-year-old Jennifer Hagel at a cliffside wedding in Newport, Rhode Island, which his sister Bree described as a storybook ceremony. George was set to take over his father's liquor store business upon his return to the US. His new wife, Jennifer, had recently completed a master's degree in education at the Roger Williams University in Rhode Island, and was going to start a new job teaching third grade children after the summer. Four days later, on June 29th, the couple boarded the Royal Caribbean cruise ship, the MS Brilliance of the Seas, ready for their two-week honeymoon, which would take them around several Mediterranean countries, including Italy, Greece, and Turkey. The pair boarded from Barcelona in Spain. Several days into the cruise, the couple made new friends, most of whom were other couples, but one particular individual was a 20-year-old man named Josh Askin, who was attending the trip with his family. Josh met Jennifer and George while the group visited Florence in Italy. On the night of July 5th, however, things on the cruise ship took a turn. CCTV showed Jennifer and George entering the third floor casino at around midnight. Beforehand, the couple had spent the day in Greece and had dinner together, toasting to their future together. The CCTV footage of George is the last footage of him. While in the casino, George drank absinthe, which had reportedly been snuck on board as it was not available on the ship, with Josh Askin and three young Russian-American men that he had also met named Gregory Rosenberg, Rusty Kaufman, and Zach Rosenberg. Meanwhile, Jennifer was allegedly getting close to one of the crew members. The pair flirted back and forth, which upset George, and he and his wife entered into an argument that resulted in Jennifer kicking her new husband in the crotch before storming out. This was reportedly around 2.30 in the morning. According to Josh, the men partied late into the night, and when they decided to eventually return to their cabins, they realized that George could barely walk, and so they accompanied him back to his room. However, George realized his wife wasn't there, so they all went looking for Jennifer together. When they couldn't locate her, the group of men returned George to his room once again. According to Josh's story, he went to use the bathroom, and when he came back, the other men had taken off George's shoes and put him to bed just after 4 a.m. From here, the four men claimed that they stayed a short while in the room, then returned to their own cabin where they ordered a large amount of food. So much food that they took pictures of it and of themselves with their meals. However, according to a Californian deputy police sheriff named Cletus Hyman, who was staying next door to George, this was not the case. He called to complain about the noise levels in George's room and claimed that this was not the first time he had done so. Hyman watched out of his peephole and saw three men leave George's room and walk down the hallway. He heard George ushering people out of the room beforehand. It's unknown who exactly Hyman saw leaving the room, Shortly after this, he heard a, quote, horrific thud. It sounded like someone had fallen onto the balcony and that the sound had caused vibrations in his room. This was around 4.30 a.m. Around this time, Jennifer was found passed out in the hallway of the ship by some of the crew and has very little memory of what happened after leaving the casino. 
At 7.30 the following morning, passengers of the cruise noted a huge blood stain on one of the awnings of the ship and alerted the crew members. Jennifer assumed her husband was sleeping elsewhere and left for an appointment she'd made for the two of them at the onboard spa. She was later alerted by the ship's crew and it was realized that George must have gone overboard somewhere between Greece and Turkey. Early on in the investigation into the disappearance of George Smith IV, the captain waved the incident off as an accident, but many online sleuths, along with George's family, are not so sure. Small traces of blood were found in George's cabin, and the investigators working the case treated it as a homicide. On July 29th, the FBI announced their involvement with the case. The bizarre tale received much media coverage from the likes of Geraldo Rivera, 48 Hours, and Dateline NBC, who made the suggestion that it was a robbery gone wrong. The case even inspired its own made-for-TV movie called Deadly Honeymoon. In 2012, the New York Post reported that the case had been handed over to the Mafia Division of the FBI. It is unknown why. In 2012, Mike Jones, the Smith family lawyer, accrued documents from the cruise company which raised doubts about the accounts given by the four men who accompanied George back to his cabin on the night he went missing. According to them, they ordered a massive amount of food, but the cabin has no record of this supposed room service order. Josh Askin, the 20-year-old Californian who'd befriended George on the cruise, failed an FBI polygraph test, and while being questioned by the Smith family lawyer, he invoked his Fifth Amendment right. One of the Rosenberg cousins' polygraph tests with the FBI came back as inconclusive. The other two men's results are unknown. However, Josh's lawyer, Keith Greer, maintains that his client was with the other men in the cabin across the ship when George disappeared, and that Josh had passed a polygraph which had been administered earlier on in the investigation. We also must remember that polygraph tests are notoriously unreliable. He also claims that the FBI is in possession of the photos which showed the men with their food in the early hours of July 5th, and that the timestamps on those images prove that the men were in their cabin when George went missing. Seven years after the incident, Mike Jones, the Smith family lawyer, learned of a videotape made by some of the men just hours after the disappearance. The three Russian-American men are seen and heard making callous jokes about George's death stating, quote, We gave that guy a paragliding lesson without a parachute. With Gregory Rosenberg adding at the end, quote, I told you I was gangster. Although the family only learned of the tape in 2012, the FBI had known about it since 2005. Adding further fuel to the fire, the three Russian-American men and their families were reportedly kicked off the cruise just three days after the disappearance, when a 20-year-old woman came forward and claimed she had been raped by Kaufman and the Rosenberg cousins. Josh Askin was allegedly present for part of it, and the assault had been filmed on Rusty Kaufman's camera. Jennifer, after being questioned by Turkish authorities, chose not to remain on the cruise and instead flew back home. She has been heavily criticized by the Smith family for her behavior following George's disappearance, including for when she accepted $1.1 million in compensation from the cruise line and publicly stated that she believed George died in an accident resulting from his levels of intoxication. In 2009, she remarried and has two children. However, a Daily Mail article from 2015 notes that she has since changed her belief and now believes that George was murdered. Despite all the suspicious goings on, the FBI dropped their criminal investigation into the case in 2015. George's body has never been recovered and no charges have ever been brought in his case. Li Ying Lei in February of 2017, 36-year-old Li Ying Lei, who often went by Angie, boarded the MSC Cruises MSC Magnifica for a 10-day Mediterranean cruise with her husband, Daniel Belling, and their two children, aged four and six. 
The family departed on February 9th, but when the ship returned to Italy on February 19th, only three of the four family members left the MSC Magnifica. Daniel and the two children were about to board a flight back to their home of Dublin Island when the Italian authorities approached the family and brought the 46-year-old, who was an IT consultant, into custody. The children were collected by their paternal grandparents, who lived in Germany. The ship's crew realised that someone was missing due to the onboard security measures. It was detected that one less person had passed through the ship's turnstile while leaving, and the crew managed to narrow this down to Daniel and Angie's family before alerting authorities. Daniel was immediately treated as suspect number one. He had told nobody that his wife was missing. He had not raised the alarm or even seemed concerned that she was simply gone from the ship. He also gave the police conflicting information. Daniel told authorities that he last saw Angie after the ship stopped at the Greek port. She apparently stayed on board while he took the children out on an excursion, and when they returned, she was gone. He explained that his wife was very unhappy and ready to leave the cruise, and that she often disappeared from family vacations. He assumed she was hiding out somewhere and would meet them in Italy, or perhaps she had left for good this time and returned to Dublin. When she didn't show in Italy, he guessed that Angie had escaped their marriage and returned to her native China, claiming that she had threatened to do this several times before. Angie was last seen by crew members on the second day of the cruise, February 10th, where an odd interaction by the couple was seen by employees of the gift shop. Reportedly, Daniel had stormed into the store, pulling out a pair of trainers from his backpack and saying to his wife, quote, put these on instead of your sandals and shut up. Witnesses claimed that Angie looked shaken after the interaction and none of the crew saw her again. She was absent at mealtimes, the children and Daniel ate alone, and Daniel reportedly told the maid that they did not need to make up the fold-out bed, as there was only three people sleeping in the room now, and they would share the main bed. There are mixed reports about Angie's possessions, however. Several articles claimed that her phone, passport, and suitcase were missing, while most claimed that Angie had left them behind. Daniel had apparently packed up her belongings and planned to take them back with him to Dublin. It's unknown how or why Angie would have left without her possessions, particularly her phone and passport, since she was in a foreign country. Contradicting his earlier statement, Daniel at one point claimed that Angie had gotten off the ship in Greece after all, to meet for business with the Chinese community that resided there. Angie was a wedding planner with her own business named Cinderella's Wedding, which she started up in 2015. The business was aimed at Asian brides and grooms, and offered dress rentals and wedding photo album design, among many other things. Another contradictory statement was offered by the children, who said that their father asked them to stay in the cabin one night while Daniel and Angie went out, but their mother never returned. Angie's mother was not alerted to her missing daughter by Daniel or the investigators. She found out through a friend who could read and speak English and who found and translated the article for her. Upon hearing that Angie was missing, her mother confirmed that she had not returned home to China. She also said in a sworn statement that her daughter and her daughter's husband frequently fought and had a tumultuous marriage. After one particularly bad argument, spurred on by Daniel taking the children away to Germany for 10 days without saying anything, Angie reportedly ended up with bruises on her wrists. As a result, she kicked her husband out of their shared home, letting him in the next day only so he could have breakfast, take the kids to school, and work from home. Despite this, Angie's mother denies thinking that Daniel is involved in her daughter's disappearance, claiming that she had a good relationship with her son-in-law and that he is a, quote, very good person. She also went to visit him in prison in Italy. She did, however, add that she didn't believe her daughter would leave her children behind or commit suicide. Angie's mother last heard from her daughter on February 7th, 2017, just days before the cruise. Cruise ship workers also noted that one of the Bellings' children was found wandering the ship alone and crying on the evening of February 15th. It's unknown why or if this has anything to do with the case. Some articles about the family claim that they were struggling financially and ask how the family afforded to go on the cruise in the first place. Then, 
On April 8, 2017, investigators thought they'd finally cracked the case when two men working on their boat in the town of Rimini on the Adriatic coast found a dark blue suitcase floating in the water. It crashed into their vessel, so they hauled it from the water and noticed its considerable weight. When they opened it up, they found the body of an Asian woman wrapped in black bin bags. When authorities arrived, they immediately suspected that the body belonged to the missing 36-year-old Li Yinglei. However, there were a few things that didn't seem to add up. Firstly, if the case had been thrown overboard, it must have traveled 750 miles out to sea, and it simply did not show that kind of wear and tear. Secondly, witnesses noted that the Belling family carried matching multicolored cases. They did not own a dark blue one. A day later, authorities began to really have doubts when they realized the woman in the suitcase had longer hair, was much thinner, and even a little taller than Angie. The autopsy confirmed via DNA testing that the body was not that of Li Yinglei, but of an unidentified woman who had died from starvation. The woman's body bore no signs of violence, and law enforcement believed that she went into the case and bin bags while alive. The case is estimated to have been in the water for around 10 days. One year later, in April of 2018, Daniel Belling was freed from the Italian prison he'd been in for a year. At the hearing, his lawyer told the courts that in 2013, Angie had told an official at Tulsa, Ireland's Children and Family Agency, that she was fed up of life in Dublin and wanted to go back to China. Ireland's Crime Call series did an episode on the case in March of 2017, where they discussed the idea that Angie's body was disposed of in her own suitcase. If the case was thrown overboard, it's likely it will have washed up in Egypt or Libya. In 2019, it was reported that Daniel Belling was facing seven charges under the Theft and Fraud Act in relation to mortgage fraud, among other things. As of summer of 2020, Daniel is now facing charges of killing his wife and destroying her body. The case is still ongoing. And there you have the facts. Please leave a comment down below with your own theories and speculations, and remember to like this video and subscribe to support the channel. If you're still hungry for true crime content, you can check out the Cold Case Detective podcast by following the link below. Thank you for watching. Stay alert, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.